On June the 14th, an F-35B fighter jet from the Royal Navy aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales made an emergency landing at the Trivandrum International Airport in Kerala, India, due to low fuel. Initially, I didn't pay much attention to the incident thinking that it was just a case of low fuel and that the aircraft would continue to take off once refueling was completed. But as time went by, and more than 10 days had passed, and the ceasefire between Iran and Israel had come into effect, I realized that the plane was actually still stuck in India, unable to take off. This made me realize at once that things might not be as simple as I thought, and I was afraid that the British had run into a lot of trouble. In fact, the Prince of Wales Carrier Strike Group set sail from the port of Portsmouth, England, as early as April the 22nd this year, began an eight-month deployment to the Asia-Pacific region, which is the first time that the carrier went to the Pacific region. June the 3rd, the fleet crossed the Red Sea, entered the Indian Ocean, and continued to the Pacific Ocean. During the voyage, on June the 9th, the Prince of Wales conducted a joint exercise with several ships of the Indian Navy, demonstrating good cooperation. Unfortunately, on the night of June the 14th, a British carrier pilot, Capt. Mike, requested assistance from the Indian Air Force, IAF, stating that he was unable to return safely to HMS Prince of Wales due to bad weather and lack of fuel. The IAF communicated with the airport authorities and immediately directed the pilot to land the aircraft at the Trivandrum International Airport. After the aircraft landed safely, the Indian side provided food and accommodation to the pilot and offered to refuel the F-35Bs. However, surprisingly, the pilot only asked for a chair, after which he sat quietly beside the aircraft, stopped communicating with the Indian side, and even refused entry in customs checks. It was only the next day that the British side sent a team of professionals to start dealing with the aftermath. On June the 15th, the aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales sent a Grey Falcon helicopter with technicians and replacement pilots to land at the Trivandrum International Airport for processing. However, during the inspection, it was discovered that the hydraulic system of the F-35B had failed, making it unsafe to take off, and the aircraft was grounded. The 17th of June, the helicopter returned to HMS Prince of Wales, while the original pilot and a few technicians remained in India to continue the maintenance work on the aircraft. Trivandrum International Airport, located in Tiruvananthapuram, the capital of the southern Indian state of Kerala, is India's fifth largest airport and home to the Southern Air Command. Although this airport is dual use, its primary mission is to support civil aviation operations. After the British side rejected the Indian offer of a hangar, it was decided to park the aircraft in the open and the Indian side was asked to demarcate a small exclusion zone at the airfield to ensure the security of the aircraft and send soldiers to guard it. However, as the Trivandrum area is located on the Indian Ocean coast, the climatic conditions are extremely complex, especially at this time of the monsoon season, when heavy rains and strong winds often hit the region. In such an environment, repairing a highly complex fighter aircraft like the F-35B is nearly impossible, especially in the open air, which has led to repeated delays in restoring the aircraft. Today, the F-35B has been in India for a full 11 days. As the UK's most advanced and expensive fighter jet at the moment, the incident of the F-35B being stranded in India, while seemingly insignificant, is far from trivial. Although India and the United Kingdom maintain relatively friendly relations, but in the face of such sensitive military equipment, the United Kingdom obviously hold a high degree of wariness of India. After the plane landed, the pilot was unusually cold to any help offered by the Indian side and even refused to cooperate with the entry inspection. The British military also insisted in the follow-up that the aircraft be parked in the open rather than accepting the hangar provided by India, clearly showing a lack of trust in India. India has deep military cooperation with Russia and has a long and stable high-tech arms deal with Russia and advanced Western fighter jet like the F-35 could trigger serious consequences if the Indians gain any information about it especially if it is sent to Russia. In addition, India's relationship with Britain is not as close as it seems. After all, India was once a British colony, and the colonial policies implemented by Britain and India still sow hostility in the minds of some people. Today, the Indian Army is equipped with a plethora of high-tech weaponry from Russia, the US and France, but almost none from the UK. Although the F-35B is not as dependent on a carrier's catapult and blocking system as a conventional carrier-based aircraft, and has the ability to make short takeoffs and vertical landings, it requires a great deal of skill from its pilots, especially to make landings on an aircraft carrier. This time, the airplane landed in India is considered lucky if the accident occurred in the vicinity of some countries, 
I am afraid that the consequences are unimaginable. Although some Indian netizens have said that India should detain the F-35 and use it to exchange the British looted artifacts from India, but this kind of speech is limited to the network flirtation, does not have the actual operation. The big dilemma, however, is what the British should now do with the stalled aircraft? With the aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales having left the Indian Ocean a few days ago, heading for the Pacific Ocean and preparing to leave for Australia, it's clear that there is currently no way to bring the plane back directly, unless it waits until the carrier returns in a few months' time. The British military has sent a special plane, with more than 40 technicians to India, to carry out repairs on the F-35B. However, it is hard to be optimistic that the plane can be successfully repaired under such less-than-ideal circumstances. Things might have been better if the British military had been willing to send the aircraft into a hangar for repairs. By dismantling and maintaining the airplane in a hangar, there is no need to worry about water ingress into the fuselage or exposure to inclement weather. However, the British military seems to be more willing to expose the F-35B to an open-air environment than the risk of leaking stealth technology. If it can't be repaired, I'm afraid we'll have to consider dismantling it or transferring the aircraft back to the UK by other means. Technically speaking, the most likely solution is to partially dismantle the aircraft and transport it back to the UK using the C-17 Globemaster transport aircraft. Although the C-17 can accommodate the disassembled F-35S, there is a significant risk of disassembling the aircraft in monsoon weather, especially in the event of heavy rainfall, which could result in moisture or damage to the aircraft. Another possible option would be to use heavy helicopters, such as Super Stallion helicopters, to lift the F-35Bs directly off the ground. But even so, the bad weather in the South Asian subcontinent is still the biggest obstacle, and the complex lifting operation and transportation tasks also multiply the risk, especially since the aircraft is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and the consequences of any accident would be unimaginable. If the UK decides to leave the aircraft at the airport until the weather recovers, that is equally risky. Despite the F-35B's high resistance to bad weather, prolonged open-air parking could still cause damage to the stealth coating and increase maintenance costs. And the bigger pitfall is that a lightning strike could become a huge scandal for the British Navy. For now, it looks like the monsoon weather in Kerala will continue for a few more months. With heavy rains showing little sign of stopping, we may have to wait a while to see a final resolution for the future of this F-35B. Regardless, this incident is clearly not good news for the US or Lockheed Martin. If they wish to sell F-35S to India in the future, this incident will undoubtedly leave an extremely bad impression on India.